Hi, my name is Joe and I'm a solutions engineer with SmartBear. And today we're going to be taking a look at standardization in Swagger Hub. So Swagger Hub is SmartBear's platform for API design and development. And you can use Swagger Hub to standardize the APIs that you're developing. And by that I mean, let's say you're an organization that is deploying you know, 20 different interfaces or APIs. If you want developers to actually adopt them and use them and keep using them, you want them to have a you know, smooth and consistent user experience. And to do that, you need to make sure that all of your APIs are behaving in a consistent and expected way. So standardization is a tool that you can use within Swagger Hub that allows you to set certain rules that mean all your APIs are going to have to meet certain standards to be published and released. And we can take a look at that now. So I'm in Swagger Hub and I'm inside my organization, Swagger Org. You can see it there on the left of the screen. And I've got three different APIs here. Uh, so let's say I want to set some rules that all these APIs are going to need to meet. I can do that at the organization settings level and I'm opening up standardization. So there's two sides to standardization in Swagger Hub. The first side of it are the rules that we have defined for you in the platform and you can just check a box and they're going to be applied to all your APIs. They're, the rules here are kind of best practice style rules that you'll want to implement for your APIs to be consistent. So we're talking about kind of things like a new operation must have at least one 200 response, for example, or a new operation must have a default response. So these are things that are kind of best practice when you're designing an API and things that a developer would expect your API to have. Um, you know, another example would be your API contact information must be present and a non-empty string. So these are the out-of-the-box rules that we have assigned and you can check the boxes to turn them on. And then once you have enabled API standardization for this organization and also enabled uh, the option to require an API to pass standardization to be publishable, that means that a user is not going to be able to publish an API if it breaks one of these rules. So if it breaks one of these rules, they're going to see a standardization error message and they're going to be informed that they need to go back and fix whatever it is that doesn't meet that rule. So that's one side of standardization in Swagger Hub. Now the other side are custom rules. So there's the rules that we've defined out of the box. Custom rules are rules that you can write yourself. So depending on the industry that you're working in, depending on your requirements, you might need to validate something that's very specific to your APIs or your domain. And you can use custom rules to do that. Um, so first, we're going to give this custom rule a name. So let's say, in this case, I want to write a rule that makes sure that all of my APIs are using OpenAPI 3. Uh, so the OpenAPI specification, there's version 2 uh, and there's version 3, which is the latest. Let's say I want to make sure they're all version 3. I can write a custom rule to do that. So let's call it the OpenAPI version. The next thing you'll do is import uh, an API that you will use to test the rule on. So I'm going to import my pet store. And that's going to show up here in the, uh, in the design view. So there's two sides to uh, our a custom rule, um, the path and a regular expression. So what you need to specify, first of all, is the path in the file that you want to validate against. So in this case, it's just a line in your open API definition that you want to run your custom rule on, which in this case, as you can see there and try it out, I have open API three. That's the line that I want to validate. So I can type in open API here and you'll see the try it out window updates to just highlight whatever is on that path in the definition. So you can see in this case, this definition meets that rule because it has open API three. The second thing that you need to set up is the regular expression field. And what you're saying here is that whatever is in this box needs to match what's in the definition or else it will fail the, um, the validation rule. So in this case, we're saying that the open API path must match 3.0 or else the definition fails the custom standardization rule. So in this case, just to see what that would look like if it didn't, I can change the definition here. If I change this to two, then it would fail. So let's say, I want to see what it would look like if the definition fails the rule. I can add a two in here. So we're saying here, open API must match two. You can see here it's three, so it doesn't. And we're getting an error message there. 
you can change the rule severity as well. So if you want it to be high severity, you can make it an error, which means that the user is not going to be able to publish the rule. Or if it's not as critical as that, you can make it a warning, which means the user is still going to be able to publish the definition, but there'll be a warning present um, on its entry in Swagger Hub. So we'll change that back to must match three, which it does. And if it doesn't, we'll just enter in an error message that the user is going to see. So open API version must be three. So now I can save that. And you can see in the custom rules section down there at the bottom, we've got our open API version rule written and set and the error message that's going to show up if the rule is broken. So now I can save all of these standardization rules. And now when I go back into my hub view, and we go into our Swagger org, we're going to see that, unfortunately, none of our definitions at the moment are meeting the rule, because all of these definitions are OAS2. So they're an earlier version of the definition, as you can see here, meaning that it breaks the rule. So that's one side of standardization in Swagger Hub, so custom rules and the general standardization rules. Another feature of Swagger Hub is domains. So when you're working in Swagger Hub, you can store two types of things. You can store an open API definition, which looks like this. So it's an actual definition of an API describing operations, requests, security information, that type of thing. But you can also store domains. And a domain is a, you can think of it as a reusable component. So again, think of the scenario where if you have 20 different APIs and they're all working within the same technical and business domain, there's a very good chance that there's going to be certain types of requests or responses or parameters that pop up a lot in different APIs. So if you have an organization that has multiple teams and multiple team members working on all these APIs, you want to make sure that you know, in this example, I have a 404 response domain. What I can use this for is anytime a designer needs to implement a 404 response in an API in Swagger Hub, they can reference this domain, right, which contains YAML that describes what the response looks like. So instead of having to write, you know, these 20 lines of YAML in every definition that needs a 404, instead, you can reference it using one line which would look something like this. So you use the dollar symbol to reference a domain in Swagger Hub. So instead of 20 lines of YAML, you take the URL of the domain and use the dollar ref tag in the relevant part of your definition, and that's going to reference that domain in your definition. And it's kind of like inheritance in programming where you don't want to have to implement things from scratch every time they show up um, somewhere in your system. So instead, what teams will often do is they'll set up a project in their organization. And that project might contain all of the domains that are going to need to be reused by teams in that organization so that everybody is using the same components. And every time these common responses and common parameters are showing up, they're all going to look and feel the same way. And this ties in with standardization to make sure that if you have 20 APIs and you want to make sure that the developers integrating with them have a consistent user experience, this is all going to help save you a lot of time. So that's a look at standardization in Swagger Hub. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll talk to you all again soon.